14. Cesare, let's resume our usual conversation. Apparently, the thing that most immediately interests you is the insurrection, and I admit that, however difficult it seems, it could be staged and won, sooner or later. In essence governments rely on soldiers, and the conscripted soldiers, who are forced reluctantly into the army barracks, are an unreliable weapon. Faced with a general uprising of the people, the soldiers who are themselves of the people, won't hold on for long, and as soon as the charm and the fear of discipline is broken, they will either disband or join the people. I admit therefore that by spreading a lot of propaganda among the workers and the soldiers, or among the youth who tomorrow will be soldiers, you put yourselves in a position to take advantage of a favorable situation, economic crises, unsuccessful war, general strike, famine etc etc, to bring down the government. But then? You will tell me, the people themselves will decide, organize, etc. But these are words. What will probably take place is that after a shorter or longer period of disorder, of dissipation and probably of massacres, a new government will take the place of the other, will re-establish order, and everything will continue as before. To what purpose then was such a waste of energy? Giorgio, if it should occur as you suggest, it does not mean that the insurrection would have been useless. After a revolution things do not return to as they were before because the people have enjoyed a period of liberty and have tested their own strength, and it is not easy to make them accept once again the previous conditions. The new government, if government there has to be, will feel that it cannot remain safely in power unless it gives some satisfaction, and normally it tries to justify its rise to power by giving itself the title of interpreter and successor of the revolution. Naturally the real task the government will set itself will be to prevent the revolution going any further and to restrict and to alter, with the aim of domination, the gains of the revolution, but it could not return things to how they were before. This is what has happened in all past revolutions. However we have reason to hope that in the next revolution we will do a lot better. Cesare, why? George because in past revolutions all the revolutionaries, all the initiators and principal actors of the revolution wanted to transform society by means of laws and wanted a government that would make and impose those laws. It was inevitable therefore that it would produce a new government, and it was natural that a new government thought first of all of governing, that is of consolidating its power and, in order to do this, of forming around itself a party and a privileged class with a common interest in it remaining permanently in power. But now a new factor has appeared in history, which is represented by anarchists. Now there are revolutionaries who want to make a revolution with distinctly anti-government aims, therefore the establishment of a new government would face an obstacle that has never been found in the past. Furthermore, past revolutionaries, wanting to make the social transformation they desired by means of laws, addressed the masses solely for the basic cooperation they could provide, and did not bother to give them a consciousness of what could be wished for and of the way in which they could fulfill their aspirations. So, naturally, the people, liable to self-destruction, themselves asked for a government, when there was a need to reorganize everyday social life. On the other hand, with our propaganda and with workers' organizations we aim to form a conscious minority that knows what it wants to do, and which, intermingled with the masses, could provide for the immediate necessities and take those initiatives, which on other occasions were waited for from the government. Cesare, very well, but since you will only be a minority, and probably in many parts of the country you will not have any influence, a government will be established just the same and you will have to endure it. Giorgio, it is more than likely that a government will succeed in establishing itself, but whether we'll have to put up with it, that we will see. Note this well. In past 
revolutions there was a primary concern to create a new government and the orders were awaited from this government. And in the meantime things remained substantially the same, or rather the economic conditions of the masses deteriorated because of the interruption of industry and commerce. Therefore people quickly became tired of it all, there was a hurry to get it over and done with and hostility from the public towards those who wanted to prolong the state of insurrection for too long. And so whoever demonstrated a capacity to restore order, whether it be a soldier of fortune, or a shrewd and daring politician, or possibly the some sovereign who had been thrown out, would be welcomed with popular applause as a peacemaker and a liberator. We on the contrary understand revolution very differently. We want the social transformation at which the revolution aims to begin to be realized from the first insurrectional act. We want the people immediately to take possession of existing wealth, declare gentlemen's mansions public domain, and provide through voluntary and active initiatives minimal housing for all the population, and at once put in hand through the work of the Constructors' Association, the construction of as many new houses as is considered necessary. We want to make all the available food products community property and organize, always through voluntary operations and under the true control of the public, an equal distribution for all. We want the agricultural workers to take possession of uncultivated land and that of the landowners and by so doing convince the latter that now the land belongs to the laborers. We want workers to remove themselves from the direction of the owners and continue production on their own account and for the public. We would like to establish at once exchange relationships among the diverse productive associations and the different communes, and at the same time we want to burn, to destroy, all the titles and all material signs of individual property and state domination. In short, we want from the first moment to make the masses feel the benefits of the revolution and so disturb things that it will be impossible to re-establish the ancient order. Cesare, and do you think that all of this is easy to carry out? Giorgio, no, I'm well aware of all the difficulties that we will be confronting, I clearly foresee that our program cannot be applied everywhere at once, and that where applied it will give rise to a thousand disagreements and a thousand errors. But the single fact that there are people who want to apply it and will try and to apply it wherever possible, is already a guarantee that at this point the revolution can no longer be a simple political transformation and must put in train a profound change in the whole of social life. Moreover, the bourgeoisie did something similar in the Great French Revolution at the end of the 18th century, although to a smaller degree, and the Ancien Régime could not re-establish itself notwithstanding the Empire and the Restoration. Cesare, but if, despite all your good or bad intentions, a government establishes itself, all your projects will go up in the air, and you would have to submit to the law like everybody else. Giorgio, and why is that? That a government or governments will establish itself is certainly very probable. There are a lot of people that like to command and a lot more that are disposed to obey. But it is very difficult to see how this government could impose itself, make itself accepted and become a regular government, if there are enough revolutionaries in the country, and they have learned enough to involve the masses in preventing a new government finding a way to become strong and stable. A government needs soldiers, and we will do everything possible to deny them soldiers, a government needs money and we will do all we can to ensure that no one pays taxes and no one gives it credit. There are some municipalities and perhaps some regions in Italy where revolutionaries are fairly numerous and the workers quite prepared to proclaim themselves autonomous and look after their own affairs, refusing to recognize the government and to receive its agents or to send representatives to it. These regions, these municipalities will be centers of revolutionary influence, against which any government will be impotent, if we act quickly and do not give it time to arm and consolidate itself. Cesare, but this is civil war. Giorgio, it may very well be. We are for peace, we yearn for peace, 
but we will not sacrifice the revolution to our desire for peace. We will not sacrifice it because only by this route can we reach a true and permanent peace. 15. Gino, worker, I have heard that you discuss social questions in the evenings and I have come to ask, with the permission of these gentlemen, a question of my friend Giorgio. Tell me, is it true that you anarchists want to remove the police force? Giorgio, certainly. What? Don't you agree? Since when have you become a friend of police and carabinieri? Gino, I am not their friend, and you know it. But I'm also not the friend of murderers and thieves and I would like my goods and my life to be guarded and guarded well. Giorgio, and who guards you from the guardians? Do you think that men become thieves and murderers without a reason? Do you think that the best way to provide for one's own security is by offering up one's neck to a gang of people who, with the excuse of defending us, oppress us and practice extortion, and do a thousand times more damage than all the thieves and all the murderers? Wouldn't it be better to destroy the causes of evil, doing it in such a way that everybody could live well, without taking bread from the mouths of others, and doing it in a way so that everyone could educate and develop themselves and banish from their hearts the evil passions of jealousy, hatred and revenge? Gino, come off it. Human beings are bad by nature, and if there weren't laws, judges, soldiers and carabinieri to hold us in check, we would devour each other like wolves. Giorgio, if this was the case, it would be one more reason for not giving anybody the power to command and to dispose of the liberty of others. Forced to fight against everybody, each person with average strength, would run the same risk in the struggle and could alternatively be a winner and a loser, we would be savages, but at least we could enjoy the relative liberty of the jungle and the fierce emotions of the beasts of prey. But if voluntarily we should give to a few the right and the power to impose their will, then since, according to you, the simple fact of being human predisposes us to devour one another, it will be the same as voting ourselves into slavery and poverty. You are deceiving yourself however, my dear friend. Humanity is good or bad according to circumstances. What is common in human beings is the instinct for self-preservation, and an aspiration for well-being and for the full development of one's own powers. If in order to live well you need to treat others harshly, only a few will have the strength necessary to resist the temptation. But put human beings in a society of their fellow creatures with conditions conducive to well-being and development, and it will need a great effort to be bad, just as today it needs great effort to be good. Gino, all right, it may be as you say. But in the meantime while waiting for social transformation the police prevent crimes from being committed. Giorgio, prevent? Gino, well then, they prevent a great number of crimes and bring to justice the perpetrators of those offenses which they were not able to prevent. Giorgio, not even this is true. The influence of the police on the number and the significance of crimes is almost nothing. In fact, however much the organization of the magistrature, of the police and the prisons is reformed, or the number of policemen decreased or increased, while the economic and moral conditions of the people remain unchanged, delinquency will remain more or less constant. On the other hand, it only needs the smallest modification in the relations between proprietors and workers, or a change in the price of wheat and other vitally necessary foods, or a crisis that leaves workers without work, or the spreading of our ideas which opens new horizons for people making them smile with new hope, and immediately the effect on the increase or decrease in the number of crimes will be noted. The police, it is true, send delinquents to prison, when they can catch them, but this, since it does not prevent new offenses, is an evil added to an evil, a further unnecessary suffering inflicted on human beings. And even if the work of the police force succeeds in putting off a few offenses, that would not be sufficient, by a long way, 
to compensate for the offenses it provokes and the harassment to which it subjects the public. The very function they carry out makes the police suspicious of, and puts them in conflict with, the whole of the public, it makes them hunters of humanity, it leads them to become ambitious to discover some, great, cases of delinquency, and it creates in them a special mentality that very often leads them to develop some distinctly antisocial instincts. It is not rare to find that a police officer, who should prevent or discover crime, instead provokes it or invents it, to promote their career or simply to make themselves important and necessary. Gino, but, then the policemen themselves would be the same as criminals. Such things occur occasionally, the more so that police personnel are not always recruited from the best part of the population, but in general. Giorgio, generally the background environment has an inexorable effect, and professional distortion strikes even those who call for improvement. Tell me, what can be, or what can become of the morals of those who are obligated by their salaries, to persecute, to arrest, to torment anyone pointed out to them by their superiors, without worrying whether the person is guilty or innocent, a criminal or an angel? Gino, yes, but... Giorgio, let me say a few words about the most important part of the question, in other words, about the so-called offenses that the police undertake to restrain or prevent. Certainly, among the acts that the law punishes there are those that are and always will be bad actions, but there are exceptions which result from the state of brutishness and desperation to which poverty reduces people. Generally however the acts that are punished are those which offend against the privileges of the upper class and those that attack the government in the exercise of its authority. It is in this manner that the police, effectively or not, serve to protect, not society as a whole, but the upper class, and to keep the people submissive. You were talking of thieves. Who is more of a thief than the owners who get wealthy stealing the produce of the workers' labor? You were talking about murderers. Who is more of a murderer than capitalists who, by not renouncing the privilege of being in command and living without working, are the cause of dreadful privations and the premature death of millions of workers, let alone a continuing slaughter of children? These thieves and murderers, far more guilty and far more dangerous than those poor people who are pushed toward crime by the miserable conditions in which they find themselves, are not a concern of the police, quite the contrary. Gino, in short, you think that once having made the revolution, humanity will become, out of the blue, so many little angels. Everybody will respect the rights of others, everybody will wish the best for one another and help each other, there will be no more hatreds, nor jealousies, an earthly paradise, what nonsense. Giorgio, not at all. I don't believe that, that moral transformation will come suddenly, out of the blue. Of course, a large, an immense change will take place through the simple fact that bread is assured and liberty gained, but all the bad passions, which have become embodied in us through the age-old influence of slavery and of the struggle between people, will not disappear at a stroke. There will still be for a long time those who will feel tempted to impose their will on others with violence, who will wish to exploit favorable circumstances to create privileges for themselves, who will retain an aversion for work inspired by the conditions of slavery in which today they are forced to labor, and so on. Gino, so even after the revolution we will have to defend ourselves against criminals? Giorgio, very likely. Provided that those who are then considered criminals are not those who rebel rather than dying of hunger, and still less those who attack the existing organization of society and seek to replace it with a better one, but those who would cause harm to everyone, those who would encroach on personal integrity, liberty, and the well-being of others. Gino, all right, so you will always need a police force. Giorgio, but not at AII. It would truly be a great piece of foolishness to protect oneself from a few violent people, 
a few idlers and some degenerates, by opening a school for idleness and violence and forming a body of cutthroats, who will get used to considering citizens as jail bait and who will make hunting people their principal and only occupation. Gino, what, then? Giorgio, well, we will defend ourselves. Gino, and do you think that is possible? Giorgio, not only do I think it is possible that the people will defend themselves without delegating to anyone the special function of the defense of society, but I am sure it is the only effective method. Tell me. If tomorrow someone who is sought after by the police comes to you, will you denounce him? Gino, what, are you mad? Not even if they were the worst of all murderers. What do you take me for a police officer? Giorgio, ah. Ah. The police officer's occupation must be a terrible one, if anyone with self-respect thinks themselves dishonored by taking it on, even when they think it to be useful and necessary to society. And now, tell me something else. If you happened upon a sick person with an infectious disease or a dangerous madman would you take them to hospital? Gino, certainly. Giorgio, even by force? Gino, but. You must understand. Leaving them free could harm a lot of people. Giorgio, now explain to me, why do you take great care not to denounce a murderer, while you would take a madman or a plague-stricken person to hospital, if necessary by force? Gino, well, first of all I find being a policeman repugnant, while I consider it a honorable and humanitarian thing to care for the sick. Giorgio, well you can already see that the first effect of the police is to make the citizens wash their hands of social defense, and actually place them on the side of those who rightly or wrongly the police persecute. Gino, it is also that when I take someone to hospital I know that I am leaving them in the hands of the doctors, who try to cure them, so that they can be at liberty as soon as they no longer are a threat to other people. In every case, even if incurable, they will try to alleviate suffering and will never inflict a more severe treatment than is strictly necessary. If doctors did not do their duties, the public would make them do so, because it is well understood that people are kept in hospital to be cured and not to be tormented. While on the contrary, if one delivers someone into the hands of the police, they seek from ambition to try to condemn them, little caring whether they are guilty or innocent, then they put them in prison, where, instead of seeking their improvement through loving care, they do everything to make them suffer, make them more embittered, then release them as an even more dangerous enemy to society than they were before they went to prison. But, this could be changed through a radical reform. Giorgio, in order to reform, my dear fellow, or to destroy an institution, the first thing is not to establish a corporation interested in preserving it. The police, and what I say of the police applies also to the magistrates, in carrying out their profession of sending people to prison and beating them up when there is an opportunity, will always end up considering themselves as being opposed to the public. They furiously pursue the true or assumed delinquent with the same passion with which a hunter pursues game, but at the same time it is in the interests of the police that there are more delinquents because they are the reason for their existence, and the greater the number and the harmfulness of delinquents grow, so does the power and the social importance of the police. In order for crime to be treated rationally, in order to seek for its causes and really do everything possible to eliminate it, it is necessary for this task to be entrusted to those who are exposed to and suffer the consequences of crime, in other words the whole public, and not those to whom the existence of crime is a source of power and earnings. Gino, oh. It could be you are right. Until next time.